This is the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Weather Lounge. I'm your host, meteorologist Mike Mahalik, and thank you for joining us. This, this episode of the podcast is all about the upcoming pattern in February and March. So, I mean, besides the lake effect snow belts and um, they've seen a lot of snow. We all know winter has been a bit lackluster. If you like snow, especially along the I-95 corridor in the Northeast, and even to the, some of the big cities out in the Midwest, the question is, will this turn around late in the season at all? Or will spring just come on strong and turn mild for everybody? So that's what we're investigating today, and we will have meteorologist Kyle Leahy joining us from our long-range team, and he's going to be the guy to kind of walk us through what we expect through the rest of the winter season. So Kyle is set to join us after the break, so don't go away. Hey everybody, well how many times have you been burned by a weather forecast? Well, probably a few, and it might have cost your business thousands. WeatherWorks is different. We have over 30 meteorologists to give you forecasts, notifications, and weather advice 24-7. Now, that could certainly help when it comes down to making those crucial decisions, but there are even more products than that in which WeatherWorks offers, from weather data to historical reports. Call us at 908-850-8600 or visit us on the web at weatherworksinc.com. And oh, don't forget, when you think weather, think WeatherWorks. Welcome back to the Weather Lounge. It's time to talk about the winter of 2022-2023. And if the current mildish pattern is set to change going into February and March to help explain all the inner workings of the atmospheric pattern and what that's been doing, we have meteorologist Kyle Leahy of our long range team joining us and helping us out. Hey, Kyle, how's it going? I'm good. Um, so, you know, Kyle, I, it's been an interesting season, that's for sure, <laughs> trying to figure out uh, how this winter pattern is going to set up. Um, but I think one of the things that we really need to cover is what's happened so far. Um, why has the pattern been doing what it's been doing? It, it's been rather odd that it is so mild uh, through a lot of the winter season. So let, let's start that off. I mean, what's leading to all of this mildness across the country? I mean, really recently what's happened is um, a lot of it has kind of been having to do with the Pacific jet. And we did end up getting into a pattern that was similar in terms of like the Pacific side, as opposed to uh, the Atlantic side, that is normally quite favorable um, for cold air dumping into the U.S. Uh, and that's pretty much what's happened. It just kind of hasn't happened here. And that's really been the story of the winter, really. And by here, you mean the, the northeast Midwest and northeast. the most part? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It, it's, it's really just been dumping into the West. Um, a lot of those, like a lot of the time, those cold shots work farther east. But really, um, this is just kind of based on the La Nina that we've been in really for the last few years. And those just kind of favor colder air just being dumped into the Pacific Northwest uh, as opposed to the Midwest and Northeast. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what's happened across the West, I mean, they've had tons of snow, you know, throughout the Sierra Nevada and the Cascades and, and all those areas out there with uh, what's called that atmospheric river, um, that's been the buzz term across the media. Um, but can you explain the atmospheric river just a little bit, just for our listeners, so they know what that really means? So it, it's it's pretty much when you have a s strong Pacific jet. So basically the, uh, the jet stream that uh, we all hear about all the time. Most of the time, it's set up, um, it kind of just traverses most of the Pacific, but it usually decreases in strength pretty quickly once you get kind of like towards Alaska, well, south of Alaska. Um, but what ended up happening earlier in the winter, this is more kind of like early in the month, like late December-ish, the Pacific jet extended all the way to the West Coast. Um, 
which is very, very rare for La Nina winners. But yeah, it's basically when you have a, a, an anomalously strong Pacific jet and you get all this moisture rushing in pretty much straight off the ocean. And I think that's an interesting part that you kind of just brought up there is that this is a La Nina winter. This isn't something that we generally see in a La Nina winter. Um, and I think somebody even said it, it, it's almost setting up like an El Nino pattern. Um, is that true? Is there any truth to that? Yeah, uh, I think so. So a lot of the time um, when you have strong El Nino uh, winners, that's when you end up getting that really, really strong Pacific jet. A lot of the time in a La Nina winter, or at least the stronger ones, or even even moderate La Ninas like uh, we've been seeing over the last couple of years, um, the Pacific jet is actually much farther to the west, really like towards Japan. And what ends up happening there is um, you get a lot of high pressure near the Aleutian Islands west of Alaska, and you get the cold dumping into the west, which is pretty similar to what we're seeing right now and likely what we're going to be seeing as we talk about later into, in, uh, into February. But with El Nino's, that's when you get the really strong Pacific jet uh, pushing um, kind of right along the coast. So a lot of the time, um, when we do have really warm La Nina winters, that's usually not how it happens. So this has been a very peculiar winter in that regard. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you have a better answer, but I mean, why would a La Nina be acting more like an El Nino like what is has been kind of forcing this this way is there any type of um, different global oscillations that maybe I don't know about or, or maybe some stratospheric warming warming or something like that um, or some mountain torques I know there's a lot of crazy things that you guys do look at when it comes to long range forecasting but is there something like that that's been anonymously strong that's changing what La Nina is looking like this year? What ended up happening in late December which again kind of helped force that nice pattern that unfortunately didn't really produce much snow which was really just horrible, <laughs> horrible luck more than anything else. I know a lot of snow lovers didn't like that. They they saw no. the 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 big shot of cold air and yeah. uh, temperatures dropping thirty to forty degrees in a few hours, and yeah, you know there wasn't a whole lot to show for it. Um, um, but anyway, go on. Sorry, I kind of <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, so. Speaking of uh, mountain torque, as you said earlier, so what ended up happening was there was a there was a very strong positive mountain torque event. So basically, that's 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 more or less when you have really strong high pressure moving south from Siberia, kind of into Eastern Asia, and, uh-huh. and we're those, talking about the Himalayas here getting involved. Yes, yes, yeah, and so there you end up getting the Pacific Jet. Uh, it, it basically helps to promote the Pacific jet, which does help a lot of the time if you want to see a lot of high pressure near Alaska, which helps to lodge cold air, which it did. But the issue was that it was so strong that it extended the Pacific jet all the way onto the West Coast. So, yes, yeah, it it, it takes some doing. Um, but we basically ended up having a pattern that mimicked an El Nino, a very strong El Nino. but it was like an extra tropical uh, influence that led to that. Um, so that is not something that you normally see. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what ended up occurring. And the effects from that lingered for a while. So like a couple of weeks afterwards uh, through the first, let's say like 15 days of January. Yeah. And that's, what's, what's crazy to me is I, I heard about this uh, mountain torque phenomenon, you know, s- had to be over five years ago, probably more like 10 years ago. But uh, again, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit, but, um, but I was just so amazed that like, basically you're talking about winds, like running into the Himalaya mountain chain and actually like slowing down the rotation or something like that. Is that what's happening? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then the Pacific jet, uh, in order to conserve the like momentum of the Earth, compensates 
and extends. It's pretty crazy stuff. Um, there's yeah, still... I mean, when I first heard that, I was like, okay, what's this spooky X Files stuff here? <laughs> this doesn't. <laughs> yeah. This can't, this can't really happen. But then they're like, oh no, no, this is what this is what happens. It extends this and jet and angular momentum and all this stuff. And I'm and I'm going. Uh, I guess you're right. I mean, you know that it has to be conserved some way. So. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, and there's still a ton of research being done on all this stuff too. This is still like new in terms of you know how the weather goes generally but yeah yep that's uh that's pretty much what ended up happening yeah that's that's nuts but um so in december 2022 um i'm not sure how much you hit on what actually caused that big arctic blast um but was there a certain event that really triggered that to happen um in the uh, eastern part of the United States? Yeah, so it was partially uh, the Mountain Torque uh, event. but what was that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there was also, um, so there was a lot of high pressure uh, near Scandinavia. So, you know, like Norway, Finland, like around there. And what ends up happening with that, sometimes, it, it doesn't happen all of the time. Uh, but that high pressure that was near there ended up slowly uh, migrating uh, westward all the way towards greenland um so so that that that's actually how you end up getting like those big um negative nao events that a lot of people hear about especially on uh especially on like twitter and stuff like that uh, right <laughs> that's sure. pretty much yeah so the the combination of those two ended up displacing a ton of arctic air um and the pattern that we were in generally is very favorable for um getting large uh, East Coast snowstorms, um, but unfortunately, uh, the pieces didn't come together exactly the way that you'd need. Yeah, I mean, there was a big storm though that tra- oh yeah, no, it was know, a major the, storm. Yeah, central portion of the country into the Great Lakes. I mean, I believe the I forget what the low pressure on it was. It, it might have been nine sixty yeah, something it like been that. High sixties, maybe high sixties. You know, and that's a really strong low pressure system. I mean, low pressure systems that's been in the 960s compared to something like a superstorm was <laughs> superstorm 93 was 960. You know, uh, you don't really get that that often. So um, that signal was there that Kyle was talking about that this is going to be a time when we can get a big giant storm is just that instead of being on the East coast, which would have basically lambasted everybody with heavy snow and probably a, a a big one to two foot type uh, deal for the East coast, you know, it ended up being, you know, 500 miles (laughs) to the Northwest basically. Yeah. Really what ended up happening was, um, the pattern was still kind of establishing itself. And when you usually get really big storms um, on the East coast, you want high pressure. So you, you, you want, you want a ridge to be over like the Rockies. That's like the ideal spot. And the wave of energy that caused that storm came in just literally like a day too early. And the ridge that caused that storm to form was over the West coast. So it was really just a matter of that um, that wave just coming in too early, and it just formed too far west as a result. So it was it was really just if 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 you're looking for snow, it was literally just bad luck. Like there was, yeah, like there was no way that that could have been foreseen. Uh, like when people were talking about that pattern, you know, seven to ten days away, there is it's literally impossible to determine at that range like little stuff like that it's just it's just not it's not in the realm of possibility wow well you know that was a very close call for sure um and you know i know that you know you guys in the long range department uh all the meteorologists that are a part of that team um were really on top of it and and you did you, you were on that pattern change and, and really showing everybody in our winter risk product that this is going to happen and this is the time we need to watch. And I think we did a great job with that and displaying that that pattern was coming. But going forward, though, 
from here. I mean, a lot of January has been pretty mild. I mean, we're not seeing <laughs> a lot of winter storms right now. Yeah, we've seen some uh, snow to rain type events. Again, that storm track tracking, you know, along the Appalachians or west of the Appalachians through the Great Lakes and, um, you know, keeping the East Coast mainly on the warm side of the systems other than a shot of snow to begin with. Um, the Midwest is getting some snow out there for sure. Um, yeah, it's really more over the plains, but the Midwest has still gotten some, right. some decent events. So I guess we really have to go into, well, is this going to hold up? Is this what we're going to, going to see for the rest of the season? Or do we have some sort of change coming up here in February and, and into March? Uh, will, will spring be a, a late onset because of this pattern that we're seeing, the warm pattern? I know a lot of people always talk about, oh, well, it always balances each other out. You get this sea salt type pattern, which is, you know, sort of. But <laughs> yeah, there's some truth to that, but there's some truth, but not always. Um, so I, I was looking at some numbers the other day, Kyle, and um, I basically had uh, some of our WeatherWorks data team um, look at what percent of snow occurs before and after February 1st. Um, and we did something similar to this in our uh, winter outlook update um, back in mid-January, where we used January 15th. But I looked at it for February 1st um, to see how much snow really falls after February 1st. Now, climatology says for along the East Coast, it's actually not that terrible. I mean, there's usually somewhere between... 40 to 50 percent of the snowfall this season falls after February 1st. Um, and that's what climatology says. Um, interestingly, I did see that our analogs that we picked showed a little bit more than that uh, occurring after February 1st. So I was like, hey, that's not too bad. <laughs> um, so that gives you a, a little bit of an idea of what the snowfall distributions really like um, uh, through a season and the same thing out in the Midwest, you know, we're starting to get more like, you know, from Chicago through um, in, in Indianapolis and Pittsburgh, we're talking about 40 to 50% uh, of the season snow usually falls after February 1st. The analogs that we picked are a little bit on the low side of that now. Um, which is a little bit discouraging for more snowfall out there in the Midwest. Um, but I'm curious, you know, what, what you kind of make of those things um, coming up and it, will it show that this is what's going to go for the rest of the year or do we have something else in mind based on the pattern? Yeah. I mean, so again, considering that we're in a La Nina, like the general, um, pattern that you end up seeing is i guess the uh typical one where uh in in uh in february uh, anyway where it's like you end up getting a lot of high pressure kind of near the aleutian islands west of alaska or a little bit south and you get most of the cold in the west and you get a ridge in the east um so i do think that just based on the fact that as you said um, this is a good climatological period, and at least for um, the Mid-Atlantic and I think even to New York City, February is generally the best month for snowfall, uh, for the most part. Um, so I'm not really on board yet. Uh, uh, you know, you some some people are uh, going as far to say that uh, New York City might uh, reach its uh, futility record, uh, so to speak, of just not really seeing anything. Um, which I mean, it's still, it's still early and there's still a lot of time, um, on your side if you do want to see snow, um, especially considering again, uh, the climatology is good and really all that you need in February is just a, like a well-timed high pressure system, uh, more or less, just, just 
uh, moisture running into a well-timed high pressure. Um, however, just kind of looking at the pattern that we're going to be seeing, at least through the first half of the month, I mean, we're, we're probably just going to be seeing that typical La Nina pattern where most of the cold is in the West. Um, and if we get a well-timed cold shot or well-timed high pressure, you still can see snow, especially up into New England and the Midwest. It's, it's certainly a possibility at really any time of year, uh, no matter the pattern. Um, but I think once you get kind of like towards like Philly South, uh, snow, snow is going to be uh, become a bit harder to come by. I think. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. Um, so what do you see with the pattern? I mean, do we think it's going to stay in its state here like you were talking? Is there any chance of this, you know, getting dislodged in any way? You know, uh, a lot of people think, you know, well, if it's been warm all winter, maybe March will come in like a lion, like they usually say <laughs> um, with the old adage there. Um, do you see anything like that, uh, in, in this March, 2023? Yeah. So, I mean, generally with March, uh, the reason why they usually become a bit weird, uh, is because, um, so the polar vortex also extends up into the stratosphere. Um, and what ends up happening just every year really, um, is it ends up weakening pretty much entirely. And in March, if that happens a bit, quicker uh than normal then that's kind of how you end up getting those uh strange storms kind of in the spring um that we've pretty much been seeing over the last few years so like there's always uh, a window for um snow in march only because of the fact that you get a lot of like cutoff lows uh, and stuff like that and just and just a lot of weird stuff happens with those uh so you can never ever really count out march uh, i still think it's probably going to be a bit on the warmer side just because that's the way this winter's really gone it's kind of hard to shake persistence but yeah like march march is always a wild card it's 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 probably the hardest winter month to forecast uh, generally speaking yeah especially with the change of seasons like you were saying and and how those air masses are are trying to you know distribute and redistribute themselves and it, it's certainly a a um, volatile month, that's for sure. And, you know, I know it's not anything that is being shown right now, but, you know, one of the biggest storms the East Coast have seen has seen was the, the March superstorm there in 93. And obviously that was a, you know, they called it the storm of the century for a reason because, you know, it was probably the most, um, I don't know what the word is, uh, prolific or um, anomalous, uh, low pressure event that, <laughs> that we've seen. I believe in that storm. Yeah, I mean, at that time, like, at that time, I, I, I think so. I mean, now we've seen, you know, we had like the, uh, we had the bomb cyclone and I think that was, what, January 2019? 18 or 19, I believe. And that set some kind of record. But I mean, at the time, yeah, what, uh, 30 years ago now? <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> yeah, given what's been going uh, on recently. Um, we'll have to do a blog about that. Yeah. The uh, 30th yeah, anniversary 30 years, of 30 years the ago, Superstorm of 93 is coming up. Um, I think that like this month, is going to be a far departure from January in that um, with the pattern that we had in January, um, we just had the Pacific jet just like overflowing the country with, with like with like warm air. Like there was no cold air anywhere, really. But now at least um, we do have cold air getting into Canada, um, which might sound like a moral victory but generally it, it just helps when you you do like you can get those colder air masses coming in uh, but in january again there was nothing to speak of so i mean i yeah so like i suppose um the uh the uh, end result I, <laughs> I i suppose could be the same i guess but it's um there's definitely a lot more that you can work with when you have cold air in the country um, so you could end up getting like a system that, you know, 
goes through the Ohio Valley and it rains in the Northeast, but then you could get cold air kind of rushing in after, and then you can get lucky timing something up. Like it's, it's certainly within the realm of possibility as opposed to this January where there was just nothing to really, uh, nothing to really work with. Right. So is there any, I mean, yeah. I'll put you on yeah. the hot seat a little bit, just a little bit, because I know it's, it's really hard to predict things beyond seven days um, with any type of super duper accuracy. But we we do know at least patterns change and things, you know, can set up and be more favorable for storm systems or an active storm pattern that can lead to snow. Um, do you see any window in the next month or so that looks more favorable than others to produce a decent sized snowstorm? Looking towards the middle of February, um, so as I was saying earlier um, about what ended up happening uh, in December, um, so it does look like there are some indications of ridging popping up over Scandinavia, um, kind of around like the 10th to the 15th, which could be a precursor to perhaps uh, some higher latitude blocking kind of into Greenland. Uh, again, uh, the this would be occurring based off of the fact that um, once you get the high pressure over Scandinavia, it does take generally like a week or two to migrate westward. So if that is the case and we do get that riching develop, I mean, it'd be something to monitor. Um, then that is how you could get like some kind of late season shenanigans happening. So, I mean, I'd probably be looking at like, like the end of February, so probably like the last week of February into perhaps like the first week of March or two would probably be like the best time to be really looking for something. Um, you know, it's pretty speculative considering the the season as a whole or, you know, hasn't really given us much of that. Um, and the reason why uh, December is usually easier, like a, uh, better patterns are easier to pull off in December for La Nina's is because the La Nina hasn't really taken hold. Uh, and in, in February it does, which is why we're looking like it's going to be warm. That's kind of what we were looking at really. I mean, all the way in, in the fall, uh, it was almost apparent, but yeah. So if that signal for, you know, high pressure over Scandinavia does kind of hold any weight here, um, then that could be something to monitor for kind of late month, I think. Sure. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, meteorologist Kyle Lee <laughs> says there's a big storm at <laughs> yeah, the end totally. of February. <laughs> no, I know, uh, I know. No, I'm, I'm I joking know. totally. Um, uh, I, I just know that there's always that uh, mystery out there where um, the snow lovers are looking for that one big you know, massive storm. When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? So I at least wanted to try to see if there's any sort of period in there that could be maybe just slightly more favorable um, to see a bigger storm form. So that's kind of what I'm taking away from it. I don't want to pin you down and say like, if this doesn't happen, Kyle, yeah, I yeah. swear, um, um, you know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, generally, uh... I mean, winters like this just kind of happen sometimes. I mean, we've uh, we've uh, we've gotten pretty spoiled over the last fifteen years, um, generally speaking. I mean, right, it, right. It, it's almost at the point where you can kind of expect a massive storm every year, which is not uh, that's not usually the way things have been. But you know, if you've uh, if you have been a snow lover over the last ten to fifteen years, I mean, you could probably rattle off a list of uh, of storms that uh, that you've seen. And yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, there's been big storms pretty much every year, more or less. Pretty much. I mean, even in my own backyard uh, here in eastern Pennsylvania, I mean, we had a big storm back in 2016 that was like 30 inches. And then we had yeah, 2021, the 2021 storm that was over 30 inches and New England last year, even. Right. So. I don't remember that happening all that often. It it seems like it, that's been a little bit more of a higher occurrence, 
um, getting these bigger storms over the last several years. So when you have a year where you're not getting these big blockbusters, um, everybody's going like, man, what's going on? Uh, where's this big storm? Well, let's think back to, you know, several years ago where there wasn't that all the time. I got that, the, the 93 Superstorm. Let's go back to the 90s. You know, there was some big, you know, the 93 Superstorm happened, but um, I think it had like 18 inches of snow. And then you had the 96 um, blizzard. blizzard. And that was really um, it. Yeah, but exactly. In 96, there wasn't much other snow other than the big storm. I think there might have been only you know, five, six inches or something, I want to say. Um, or maybe that's the 2016 year um, where there wasn't a whole lot of snow. Yep, yep. 2016 was a one and done. Yeah, 2016 was a one and done. And it was pretty much like this the rest of the winter. Um, if, it, if it was not for that storm, which I mean, it's kind of tough to say because the pattern was quite good for it. But, you know, just so to speak, like if it wasn't for that storm, um, there's literally nothing else. I, I can't remember anything. <laughs> right <laughs> right that that's the storm i was thinking about and then uh 90 95 96 was actually a very good winter for snow um in a lot of areas everything's kind of getting a bit more boomer bust so i suppose if uh if there's anything uh you kind of got to learn to take the uh the really good winters with the big storms with winters like this i mean they're just going to happen Really, I mean, and that's something we did see in the analogs um, at the beginning of the season. We saw that there were were some winters that were very, very low on snowfall. Yeah, it was uh, it was two thousand one, two thousand two. Uh, it was like this. There was almost nothing. Uh, yeah, we kind of saw that, and and you know, when we made our forecast, we did kind of lean on that low side uh, when we came down to. The snowfall amounts um, um, based on that. Um, but Kyle, I mean, I, I don't know if you have anything else to uh, add to this uh, conversation. I, I know it's been great to talk about how this winter is, you know, turned out so far and, and, and where we might be going. I mean, I guess with winters like this, if you are looking for snow, I mean, I would just kind of keep expectations in check, sort of. Um, like there are some winners where uh, you might hear the term atmospheric memory gets thrown around. I mean, I, I'm I'm not like a major proponent of stuff like that, but some winners, I mean, they're just uh, they're just not great. I mean, you just kind of gotta take it week to week and just see if stuff pops up. But given the pattern that we're probably going to be seeing, I I wouldn't really be holding my breath on it, really. Uh, yeah, I know that's been thrown around in the past. You know, if it wants to snow, it snows, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how true that really is, but. I'm not sure how true that was, it really is either, but I, I, I know New England will probably uh, clap back at that a little bit yeah, when they had yeah. 120 well, inches of snow um, <laughs> back in. What, what year was that again? Uh, uh, that was 1415. 1415, 2014 15. I remember it was. Almost every other storm was, okay, well, we're going to start out with 8 to 12 inches, and we'll see where this one heads. Um, um, and I know they had the snow piles just from talking with our clients. They were up as high eye level on the sides of the roads um, with their cars and trucks as they're driving through. So, um, so there is that winter memory thing, but... In this case, we're kind of on the other side of that, where we're seeing, okay, it's been rather mild. We're not getting true snow events all that much. So while there is still chances to see a decent amount of snow from here on out, we also have to take into account what's been happening so far this season. And, you know, we're going to have to go from here, but we'll kind of keep our eye on things. And Kyle... Um, thank you so much for joining us here on this podcast. I think it's been great to have you along explaining everything for us. Yeah, of course. All right. So that's it for our episode of the Weather Lounge. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us. And thanks to everyone out there listening. Remember, we'll always have new podcasts rolling out, so check back frequently. And be sure to rate the podcast. This helps get out the word um, to more and more people. And don't forget to visit WeatherWorks on social media 
and always find us at weatherworksinc.com. That's all for this episode. Join us again in a couple of weeks. Thank you.